bing, bing. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, okay, Scooby. <laughs> I, I, have, I have never tried that. And I actually, it didn't completely suck. It only kind of sucked. <laughs> Wait. I can't get to a giggling. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. You're going to put this in the episode at this point. <laughs> yeah. Fucking dweeb. <laughs> I'm trying to think of something you said. <laughs> I can't. I can't get a straight face. Welcome to Mac Football Forever. I'm Alex Alvarado. That is Caleb Carter. We are here today. We are gathered here today to talk about the Akron Zips in the State of the Action series. Caleb, what sins have you committed for us to talk about Akron today? Gluttony first of all, um, mm-hmm. because when I think about the best uh, football press box uh, food spread, it was Akron. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I acted in gluttony. And uh, for that, I will not apologize um, unless, you know, I can get forgiven for it. So if you know a good Catholic church around here, I'll do that. And then I'll, you know, go back to talking about Akron football. I'm excited to whatever. go back to normalcy because I want to go to InfoCision really bad. Like I haven't been. Yeah, whatever, you know, whatever order we do that in, you know, end the pandemic, eat in the press box, go to Akron, like whatever order you feel like is best. We have five topics to talk about the Akron Zips. Uh, they didn't give us a lot of good things to talk about last year. It's kind of a tradition over there, but uh, oh. it is what it is. Still, there are some good things to talk about. Not as many uh, as bad things, but still we're kind of we're going to do this damn thing, Caleb. We're going to, we're going to do it. We told ourselves, you know, if we're going to do this series, we're going to do it right. And that means we have to do 12 actual episodes, which means we have to take this first topic series, the bright spots. Here's two of them. Tion Dollard, Bubba Arslanian. Tion Dollard and Bubba right. Arslanian were the two bright spots on this team. Tion Dollard was the running back, Bubba the linebacker. And Akron just like did not run the ball like well at all for the last I don't know, last three years under Terry Bowden in first year with uh, Tom Arthur too. Uh, and this guy went on and had just a really good year. And just, like, it wasn't just, I don't know. It didn't seem like it was like a, like a fluke performance either. It looked yeah. like he was like a running back that we really have to respect in 2021 too. Same with Bob Arslanian, who was a redshirt junior uh, linebacker who came through in a lot of ways. Yeah, and I mean, our, like Dollar gave us reason to be excited about Akron football again, and uh, that I would say that maybe the potential for like Cato Nelson to be good a couple of years ago gave us that, like some optimism, but other than that, there wasn't a whole lot of the whole lot around Akron football that you were just excited for. Mm-hmm. And after uh, Dollar ripped off his 200 yard game, I'm just like, oh, okay, you know what? Yeah, I'm actually excited to see what he does next. And that's not something I've been in the mindset of when thinking about Akron football for a few years. Yeah, well, let's just move ahead to the second point. Let's just keep this thing going. Uh, you know, so we already went through the bright spots. That's that's two of them. That's all they get. Disclaimer for the most disappointing thing that we saw, though, uh, which is our second topic. Disclaimer, we're about to talk about a freshman quarterback at Akron in a pandemic year. Like, those are, like, I can't imagine, like, a worse mix of three things to go through uh, and to play in. But still, Zach Gibson, he played an entire year. He played statistically it wasn't the greatest year ever right uh like he he had like under six yards per pass attempt uh had more interceptions and touchdowns not the best thing you want to see but he was incredibly passionate and he was there for the fight the entire time uh even though akron didn't have the best year that guy still gave it his all and that alone was kind of encouraging to see because we could have easily seen uh like we see like quarterbacks be the the voices of their team with their body language and we didn't see a guy that was really down and out of it and that you know that's not gonna like get the job done at Akron but that gets that gets things going in the right direction I would hope 
Yeah, and I don't know how good recruiting is. I know Alex has more on uh, some guys coming in for Akron to touch on, but like maybe Gibson isn't the future quarterback there. Maybe he makes big strides this offseason that we're not aware of. I don't think we're going to know much about uh, Zach Gibson's upside before you know they actually start playing games next year. But obviously, you're looking for a big leap of some of some some sort. But they have to do it without you know Jeremiah Jeremiah Knight being a transfer. They've got to have somebody come in. Either it's a freshman, maybe it's somebody who's buried up, who's uh, didn't make the impact immediately this year because the passing game just wasn't there. Uh, Zach Gibson is not going to go, you know, 11 for 21 with a touchdown and two picks and lead Akron to five or six wins next year. They have to see a big leap in some respect. And if it's being a game manager, that's fine, but there've got to be some position guys make an impact for them next year. And they've got to figure out the way, a way to make him more efficient. Yeah, exactly. It's the last thing you just said that I wanted to, wanted to say, but you're right. They have to find a way to make him more efficient because, you know, if he's just going to turn the ball over to the defense, which, you know, Bob Arzlanian is not going to be at 11 positions, you know, they have to have playmakers and it has, you know, it has to come from the quarterback position too, but Akron's kind of, they, they got to find some guys to make some plays out there. That's just kind of what it all comes mm-hmm. down to. Um, and they still, they still have just so much to build around up front too, you know, who's going to be blocking for them. Um, but you know, it, uh, here's our third topic, which is actually a third bright spot, which is that, um, the 21 game losing streak that Akron once had was finally snapped against Bowling Green. Um, and sure, it's not like the biggest win ever. Uh, and sure, it only makes them only the second worst team in the MAC. Uh, but but still, it is it was good for for Akron in that program um, to get that first win in the Tom Arth era to finally snap this this losing streak that extended through. Uh, 2018 when they beat Central 17 to 10. Now Bowling Green is riding the longest streak with nine games in a row with lost. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just another losing streak that Akron does not want to see again in the near future. I don't really know if you have anything to add to that other than the one game that they won, it was, uh, whew, they had to get that one because it didn't look like they were going to get another possible win for a while. Yeah, I think the only thing to add is that um, you saw what Akron was capable of. So while BG isn't, you know, good by any metric, you saw a team that didn't, they didn't even, they didn't have to scratch and claw to eke out a win against a bad team. Like they played, like they were a lot better than BG, which last year they were. And you like to see that they didn't just leave any room for doubt. They, you know, put the proverbial nail in the coffin after going up and kept making big plays. So, uh, you know, it wasn't, it still wasn't pretty, but they did what they were supposed to do. They looked like the better team much of last year on that day. They were a lot better and they, you know, they did what the good team is supposed to do. So uh, they weren't a good team last year, but they showed the potential to be one in the future. And that's uh, kind of what I took away from that BG game. Uh, I said it a week ago, a couple of weeks ago that it kind of looks like, you know, recruiting in the Mac like top to bottom is just getting better. Uh, if you quickly look at 24 uh, seven's 2021 list for Akron signees, uh, Akron was 11th in the Mac in its rankings, but it had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, three-star guys, which is, uh, I mean, it's honestly just, just more than what Akron's used to getting in any given year. Uh, just to give you some sort of baseline of what I mean by that. Uh, I kind of want to hit on three names from this list. They're not all three stars. Most of them are. Um, first guy I want to talk about here for three newcomers for Akron that you need to familiarize yourself with. DJ Irons is a dual threat quarterback uh, coming through the JUCO system. East Kentucky bounce back. Uh, he was like a 2018 signee, only spent a year there. Uh, spent a couple of years at Iowa Central and is now coming in. Uh, I think he has uh, sophomore eligibility, redshirt sophomore eligibility, maybe, maybe junior eligibility. I don't really know how it goes right now, uh, but he's got a couple of years to play with and he can move the ball a lot. Uh, he can run, he can throw it deep. Uh, again, I don't know what all that looks like in Akron's uniform and its pads and its system and all that. Uh, but, you know, if, 
if we need a playmaker, you know, DJ Irons is a guy to at least compete for the starting job. And I, yeah, and I will add that I think that Arth in his tenure because of his background as a Chattanooga coach is likely to bring in guys he thinks are capable at the FCS level. Eastern Kentucky was a pretty solid, on solid footing uh, FCS program. And so it wouldn't surprise me if we see moves like this from Akron uh, in place of, you know, continuing to recruit a bunch of three-star guys. Another guy that, you know, a Tom Arth has to get, you know, Tom Arth really needs Akron football to matter in Akron. And that means it has to make sure it gets guys legitimately from Akron, especially Archbishop Hoban High School, which is where Luke Bauer is coming from. He's a two-star guy, um, but he's he comes from a good football family. He's got a couple brothers that, one that played uh, in-state FCS football and another, another brother that's currently playing at Toledo, Nate Bauer. Uh, Luke Bauer, the linebacker, is coming in for Akron. Um, you know, he, again, he's not the biggest prospect in the world, but he's a hungry kid. He plays fierce, and I kind of like what he brings uh, to the table on film. Uh, he's one of those guys that, you know, you want to keep him around. He, his first two years in high school, uh, his team won state championships and went to, you know, the semifinals the next year. Uh, he comes from a good program, and you need that sort of winning mentality in that locker room, especially if it's local. That yeah, definitely helps. So hopefully that that leads to something good uh, in the locker room. And the third guy is uh, also going to be on defense, three-star kid, Rashad Hence. He's from Detroit, which means he's good. Went to Martin Luther King High School, so he's well coached there. Um, you know, physical guy that can play cornerback, safety. So he's gonna, it's going to be fun to see where in the secondary he ends up. Um, but D- Detroit is just an area where – you know, I think Akron and, you know, Ohio Mac schools, Mac schools in general, but Ohio Mac schools uh, need to infiltrate and get, you know, some of Detroit's better recruits out of there. Yeah. And that's a locker room that you need to win over as well. Yeah. As a Northern Ohio team, if you can't get, you got to get Cleveland or Detroit or some combination of both. And so NIU has gone into, into Detroit and got some good uh, kids in recent years. Uh, you know, other Michigan teams have done it. Akron needs to do it too. But like, what does it say to you? If, if all this is right about, you know, the rankings and stuff, again, we don't know how true all this is, you know, it's, sure. it's been a weird year, but if the competitive floor is risen, especially like all the way down through Akron, what do you think that means for a team like Akron moving forward? If it's baseline talents, just, just getting better. I do think that, you know, Akron's still pretty removed from having significant success in the conference. Uh, I think that Arth has to have more time recruiting and I think he has to get more. I, I, it's so lazy to say, but like, he just has to have his guys. Like he, they need to be able to build this system around what they want their identity to be. And Akron already was built upon, you know, fairly blue color guys under Terry Bowden. And uh, they need to be able to, you know, have something that works and they're never going to be the dominant power in the east they just won't uh it would take absolutely something amazing for that to happen but there that doesn't mean they shouldn't aspire to do a couple things better than everybody else and so it's going to take that before we see significant strides made by akron i do think that this year a successful year could be four wins just showing that you've risen the the the, the floor like you've said for our last topic, let's let's just uh, talk more about Tom Arth. You know, we just talked about coaches in our last spits. Um, you know, in two quote unquote seasons for Akron, he's gone one in seventeen. The one win was, of course, you know, the Bowling Green game that we just talked about. Uh, most recently, this is the only one with the only name with actual news. But then again, it's no news at all. Um, the news was that uh, with the Los Angeles Chargers having its uh, shake up with its staff. Uh, at the professional ranks, Tom Arth was considered for a job there, um, probably to work with the quarterbacks. They didn't say what the specifics were. Um, I just know that Pete Thamel uh, tweeted out that Tom Arth was in consideration last Monday and that a decision would be made at the end of the week. Nothing was said until not that Friday, not that Saturday, but until Sunday that Tom Arth would, in fact, stay at Akron instead. So there's no news there. Uh, but it's real. I didn't realize how, you know, just like kind of like thinking it over in my head, like Akron would have been really screwed if it would have had to go for a coaching search 
so late in the process in a COVID year because an NFL team hired their guy after a one win season like that like that just stressed me out so much to think about like did you kind of have that same reaction I mean if I think if Akron's starting at square one it, all it does is just come, kind of prolong the inevitable which is like you know they got to get through these growing pains for the next few years that's going to happen regardless they could hire somebody perfect and they're still not going to win six games next year so I, yeah, but like again, like but like it's just like you said, like it was already like so far out to begin with. Like, could you yeah. imagine if that was like, oh my god, we gotta delay it even more? I, yeah, I mean, it would be frustrating. Yeah. Um, I think that you know our ties to the region, that area of the state, are strong enough that it's got to, something really good's got to come his way. Like maybe if they make like no strides next year, and he's tempted again with like a. Uh, a job somewhere on a staff like I could see him like being like you know yeah this seems like the right move for me right now things are going too slow for my liking but um, I can only speak to that from like how I would probably treat it I don't know what his where he's at mentally in that respect so um, I think Akron does need to show signs of improvement if they want to keep him around because now we know he would garner some interest from NFL teams so uh, maybe just specifically because of those connections he has but I mean, that's what football coaching is anyway. So, you know, Akron has a chance to prove something next year. And I'm sure if you're Akron, you'd rather have Arthur around for a couple more years than go searching for somebody else. So something cool, like actually cool that I learned about Tom Arth, uh, he played his high school football at St. Ignatius, Ohio. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not the cool part. The cool part um, also isn't that his offensive coordinator there um, who coached him back when Tom Arth was playing in the 90s um finally retired after like 40 ish years like 39 years 40 years something like that and there was like a whole piece that came out and it talked about tom arth tom arth didn't actually start at quarterback until mm. the middle of his senior year and now he's you know respected so much even into the nfl ranks you know like he had you know professional jobs before and now he's you know got the pedigree of being a guy that can work with quarterbacks and stuff um, so that, like, I don't know, like just that little tidbit, like really, really stood out to me that like, you know, it was, this wasn't something that, you know, oh, he was like, you know, training ever since he was like seven and like, was like the guy, like his senior year and all that stuff. And was like expected to be like the best quarterback of all time. That, that wasn't really the case. Like he was a guy that, you know, eventually was thrown into the mix and worked his way up to the kind of candidate he is now to, you know, be this respected football figure. I kind of thought that was cool. Yeah. And uh, I think that he's, you know, he's young enough and the, you know, he has that R about him, like run through a wall, like George Thomas has told us before from the Akron Beacon Journal that, you know, his upside in the game of football is really high and, he's probably going to do something really big in a few years, whether that's with Akron or with somebody else that's to be seen. Yeah, for sure. Do you have any final thoughts on Akron before we, uh, before we close this thing up? Uh, I know that it wasn't the most exciting team to talk about. I don't like <laughs> saying that, but I, I did say it like a hundred times this episode. Um, but I don't know. Like Akron's just, I just wish that like there could have been more to that title run year to like, let us latch on to something to linger, linger on to. But it, I don't know. It's, it's just disappointing because I just want a team like Akron to be better. I think I'm, you know, like Akron doesn't have a great location. Like that's not, I'm not going to get into that super as far as like sure, super detailed into that. But, you know, it's, it's not in a great part of the city. And like you're not going to bring kids in on like the beauty of the campus and all that. So you've got to have an identity about this program in the next few years. that's really established for you to build on it and be successful. So um, what that is, I'm still looking for and looking for that to like actually form is part of my curiosity about the soccer team. And that's more curiosity than I could say I have had about Akron in a long time. So Tion dollars created that uh, Tion dollars, not there without Arth. Right. So, I mean, for the first time in a while, I'm excited about Akron football because I want to know what's next. And if you listening have any good ideas about how to fix Akron football, let us know in the comments <laughs> below. But until then, 
uh, let us know on Twitter at MacFBForever. Uh, you've already seen our Twitter handle, so you'll tweet us there. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you guys next time.